Good afternoon. In this video, we're going to now apply everything we've learned and actually write a program so that these two robots don't collide. Because as of right now, with the program I have, if I run this, we're going to collide the two robots, which could be a very, 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 very expensive and bad day. So right now you can see both these robots are rotating around and came very close and the two packages actually came together and now right here we're going to actually do that crash and unless we actually specify in the program that hey we don't want to have these two coming even close to each other we're going to have a collision and most of the time it's going to be a catastrophic collision so let's actually program this so that the two robots can communicate to each other and say hey i'm in this area don't come in this area until i'm out of this area so just as a review, I have two circle programs. So it's circle program on robot one, circle program on robot two. I have robot one running at override of 50%, and then I have robot two running at override at 70%. That's why you saw robot two run a lot faster than robot one. In the beginning of this, we are calling a light off. In previous videos, we actually had the light blinking for the robot when it's in a wrong position. We're actually going to now switch it to a digital output so we can communicate to the other robot. And we have an argument set to one. So this means that the robot is running. As soon as we say the argument is zero, it is not running anymore. We're going to do the circle loop for four times. We have a for loop with a counter and it's doing that circle four times. And then it's going to go back to the home position. And then we're saying that the robot is not moving anymore, which is argument of zero. The other thing that we set up, which is a major thing that you have to have set up before this will work, is the position monitoring program. So inside here, position monitoring, is we're taking a group, which is the machine positive X, machine positive Y, and machine positive, which is position Z, W, P, R. And we're setting this to a data register. So we have this now setting up so that when we're running in auto mode, the robot knows that, hey, I'm at this position. We have this constantly running in the background by going to the setup and in the setup number two, which is BG logic, which is background logic. So this is constantly running. We don't have to call this program inside of another program. It's constantly updating our position and dumping them into some data registers as the robot is actually running in auto mode. Let's now write the program to allow us to communicate between one robot and the other. So if you remember when we set up the actual cell, we went to IO interconnections and we have robot one talking to robot controller number two through digital one and digital two. So they both communicate from both DI and DO. So DO goes out from one robot into the DI next robot. So if we want to control number one, DO number one is controlling DI number one for robot controller number one and two. So if I hit OK, knowing that, let's write now the program. So then we select and we create and we call this one talk to other robot. This is much like that program that we wrote for the blinking lights. It'll just be a lot more simpler. Go to detail, and because this is going to be background logic, we're going to run this group mask as a zero, which means we have no motion at all. And I'm going to enter into that talk to other robots. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a file statement, but we can only use if statements. So I'm going to go to new instruction, jump and label and we're going to call this label one and then we're going to insert our first if statement and we're going to go if then so if our, our robot is running which was register number three and running is equal to constant of one so that means the robot's running and we insert a few lines here so I'm going to insert maybe like 20 lines. And then I'm going to do my end if, so I don't forget about it. And then right before that, we're going to have our jump label to one. So this is going to create our while statement. So everything in between here is going to be, what are we doing while this is true? So this is how we set up a while statement in RoboGuide. Then let's create two while statements inside here. So I put in, say, 10 lines here. 
So if the robot is running, then we're going through here. And now this one is going to be if the robot is running as well. So we're going to if select and then if then. And we're going to have our robot register number three is equal to one. Because we always want to check to make sure that it's running. And our register number 11 which is our y component so the y position is less than and equal to our register number five which we have set up as our th safety threshold so safety threshold we found from the previous video was 24 so anything that the box is less than 24, it means on this side. Anything greater than 24 is on this side. Now you wanna make sure that you're saving these eggs exactly the same thing from one controller to the other, because this right now we're in robot controller number two, not number one. So actually we're going to switch the view because we're gonna have on this side, so anything above 24 versus this side, which is over here. So for this one, we're going to go, instead of less than, we're going to go greater than, because everything is going to be opposite. If we're in robot controller number one, then we would have less than. So then we have our then statement. Once again, I'm going to go down here, and we add my jump label two, and we insert my jump label up here. Then here's my lines of code. Now it's a pretty simple line of code. All we have to do is turn on a digital output stating, hey, I'm in safe position. So when we go new instruction, IO, digital output will use number one, which is talk to robot 1A. And we're going to have this as off, which means we are in a safe position. We don't need to have anything else running. Okay, so then we just go in here and we delete these empty lines. So that's our first if statement, which is our technically a while statement. So we'll copy this now. And I'm going to paste it down here, logic. Escape out of there and delete these few lines. Probably don't need them. We're going to label as three and jump label three. And this one is going to be when it is less than register. And this will be means that we are in the unsafe area. So we're going to say, hey, we're in the unsafe area. Send out that number. So jump label to three. Now we forgot to do the end ifs here. Go. So our while statement, while statement. So there's our end if, and end if for our other main program. So what I'm going to do now is if the robot stops moving, so we're going to just do if. We could just do a simple if statement. If register number three, which is our argument, is not equal to one or equal to zero, then we're going to jump to label four, which will bring us out of this loop. So we'll do label four here. Okay, so here's constantly looping, 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 looping. Label number four brings us out of that command and which we're going to end our program. So I'm going to just delete this here and delete these extra lines of code. And then there's our program. So once we have this now, this is very similar to the one we're going to send to robot number one. Now, either we can rewrite this, but because we are in RoboGuide, we can actually send this program or copy this program over to the other robot. So we can just go up to our talk to other program, robot number two. So here's our talk to other right click on it and go export and to robot then what you need to do is find the robot going through all the different stages see users find your documents my cells find the actual program name or cell name and then inside there you'll see robot one robot two 
we are sending this to robot1. Select, and then go export. It will establish an FTP, file transfer protocol, and then we're going to hit done. Now you'll see in robot number one, you will see talk to other robot. Now that we have talk to other robot on robot controller two done, let's go to robot controller number one, talk to robot. It'll swap over. You should see this switch to robot controller number one. And let's all we have to do is swap over these greater than equal to signs so that it matches. So instead of greater than equal to, now we're going to be in less than equal to. So choice. And we're going to go less than equal to. Go down to our next. And this one's going to be greater than. So less than equal to and greater than. And you can see that we have all our the same exact registers set up with the exact same names. So nothing changes from robot to robot. You can use the same programs from one side to the other without worrying about the registers being different. Go back to robot controller number two. And now let's create the program that will actually make this hold if the robot is in this position and it's just about to go into this position here. So let's create a new program in Robot Controller 2 and I'm going to just call this alarm underscore hold. So alarm hold. Then I'm going to go to detail. This is going to be a group mask of asterisks because there's not going to be any motion. It's going to be purely code. Then I go end. All right, so what we're going to do now is let's set up a extra safe position here just to make sure that we're not in that threshold. So if I go to data here, you'll see that I have a register called extra safe in which I have a little bit more uh, over here to be allowed for that robot to not pass into the wrong area or not become even close to it. So I'm set it equal to zero for now. So let's hard code this into our actual program. So insert let's say 20 lines and the first thing we do is we set up a register number six and we're going to set this equal to say zero for now so that's going to give us plenty of space so when it comes up to zero in the y position then it's going to stop if it's in this position here so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to listen to see if this is on which means it's in unsafe position, we want this to turn the hold position on as well. So we're going to do an if statement. So the if statement is going to be the one with the parentheses because we're going to write our own code inside here. So if our digital input from robot one, so digital input number one, which is DO of number one. Okay, so if that is equal to on, which means it's in the unsafe area. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go to dash 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 equal to dash dash dash. So we're going to set up a parameter uh, in which we're going to call upon. So inside here, we need to figure out what is this parameter. So we're going to go parameter name and the parameter name is going to be, let's go to menu and go to system variables and we want to find our MCR group so if I go shift down everything is in alphabetical order so just find the M's so here's MCR group and if I go detail detail again inside here is called hold and hold means it's going to slow down to the next position here or the next available area and then stop so when this is true it's going to hold so if i run a program really quick if i run this circle program running here if i turn this to true notice how this robot is holding as soon as i go back to false this robot continues on. So if I hit true, this robot comes to a stop. So say this is coming into that position. As soon as it's out of the position, we unhold and it continues on. Okay, so this is huge right here. So we're going to be using the MCR underscore GRP1 
hold. So let's write that into our code. So let's go back to the select, turn off this, turn on our teach pendant, select, edit, and let's type in exactly what we saw in that variable group. We're going to go mcr underscore grp one dot dollar symbol hold so we have the parent and child escape so now we have the mcr group one dot hold and we're going to turn that on to on so okay which is true so when it's on it's true when it's off it's false so when this is in that position sending a signal over we want to have it hold then what we're going to do is do the exact opposite. So what we can do is copy this. And then if it's false, or if it's off, we want the hold to be false as well, which means we're going to be running. Okay. Now we want this constantly looping, and so that we're not messing up our CPU time, let's just add a very quick wait. So we're going to wait a few seconds here or fill a few milliseconds so we just go point say one seconds and then we're going to continuously jump back here so we're going to just go inside here new instruction jump jump to label one and then we go up here and we insert a few lines and then here's going to be my label one so this is going to constantly monitor if we're in this position, in this position, or this robot is in this position, which means it's sending a digital signal to our robot number two. If that digital signal is on, that means it's in that unsafe position. We're going to put on that hold. So we're going to turn on the hold, and then as soon as it goes back, it's going to turn it off again. So let's go into the circle program. And let's run that in the background. So inside here, argument number one, let's go new instruction. And let's go multiple control run. And we're going to run that alarm hold. So let's go into robot controller number one. And let's go into the circle program. So I'm in robot controller number one. And inside here, where we ran that check to see and hold, we're going to run the talk to other robot program. And we want to run that in the background as well. So we're going to go instruction and we're going to go to multiple control, run, and we're going to run that talk to other robot. So now that will send a digital signal over to the other robot. So if I run both of these circle programs, so I go to circle here, you'll see that this robot will now stop as soon as we go into that unsafe position. Notice how it stopped as soon as we're out of that unsafe position, and now it's stopping again. So right now, even though having it hold, it is not in a safe position because it is inside there where that robot could potentially crash. So that's where we need to do an extra few lines of code in order for it to be out of that safe position or in that safe position. So again, we just ran the code to allow it to stop if this is in the unsafe area. Okay, so it's running around, unsafe, continues again. So now we have that hold procedure done. Now we just got to make it smarter. And that's what we'll do in the next video is we'll make that hold procedure smarter so that this will not happen.